Jewish Center's video blog with the Torah portion of the era. The Jews are enslaved by Pharaoh, suffering terribly. God hears their cries and sends Moses to save the day. But Pharaoh isn't quite as easygoing as you may have thought. Yo, Pharaoh, my main man Farfar, what's up? So you ever thought that your daddy is a mummy? <laughs> What, too soon? Or check this, you better go down for a swim cause you go in senile! <laughs> you get it, senile? <laughs> no, cause senile! Like the not- Hello? Pharaoh's heart gets hardened and he stubbornly refuses to let go of the slaves. Then God pummels Egypt with 10 nasty global warming style plagues, while Pharaoh continues to ridiculously hold on to his rulership for as long as he possibly can. The plagues begin when all the waters turn to blood. Then a couple of weeks later there's this nasty frog invasion, followed by an infestation of lice and then wild animals and dead animals. Oh man, I know I should have bought a Prius. And then comes the sixth plague. <laughs> Boils. You know, like big painful pus-filled pimples that burn and itch and don't let the Egyptians enjoy a moment's peace. Mom, I have boils, I can't go to school today! But this plague was different. You see, during the first plagues, Pharaoh was surrounded by powerful magicians who would try challenging, copying, and ridiculing Moses and Aaron by each plague. <laughs> what a silly trick, Moses. Some drugs. <laughs> We know, you had him hiding behind the closet, and then you had the switch in your sleeve. It's a classic. Um, no. These magicians were actually very powerful sorcerers who used black magic to do all sorts of crazy stuff. But when the plague of boils came, the Torah tells us that it was so bad that the magicians couldn't even stand in front of Moses and Aaron. One second. Seriously? Were the boils really that much crazier than some of the other plagues? Like what about the plague of lice, where every Egyptian was left scratching like crazy for 24 hours a day? Or better yet, what about the frogs, which were actually jumping and croaking inside their bellies? La vita que ho incontrato. Seriously? Again? No, no, it's the frogs inside of me. It's the frogs inside. Okay. It's the frogs! How, after all those plagues, could the magicians still show up and try to ridicule Moses, but all of a sudden they shut down when the boils come? Unless there's something different about the plague of boils that made the magicians stay home. You see, all the other plagues brought by God didn't require any natural preparation process from Moses or Aaron. They either simply stuck out their sticks to bring on the destruction, or God did it all on his own. <laughs> because of the natural procedure that Moses was commanded to do in preparation for the plague. God told Moses to take burnt residue, like ashes, to fill his hands with it and then to throw them towards the heavens. Then they miraculously covered the sky and slowly floated down on all the Egyptians, which caused the terrible plague of boils to break out around the country. Oh, so you're saying that Moses threw scorching ash to heaven and then it fell on the Egyptian skin and they all got boils. Okay. <laughs> Tell me more. Uh huh? Children go fine. <laughs> Uh, no, it's good. No? Obviously the ashes weren't scorching hot, and neither was it physically possible for Moses to cover the sky with ashes from one single throw. But the point is that he made a human effort, and he did his best to accomplish that impossible feat. And the miracle of God followed. And that's why Pharaoh's magicians were so baffled and couldn't make sense of it to come challenge Moses. Because they figured that divine miracles, or even magic, are things that remain outside of the bounds of nature, and could never be fused together with nature's limited capabilities. So they didn't even bother challenging Moses on this one because they just couldn't understand how such a small natural act of Moses could accomplish so much. In your life, just because some mitzvah, an act of kindness, or simply doing the right thing may seem too daunting and impossible for you to accomplish. <laughs> Take the lesson from Moses and go give it your best effort to change. Because if we do our part, then God will do his, even if it means making a miracle happen to get it done. He's not afraid to do the impossible, he's just waiting on you to make the first step. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom.